testimony of an ex-Freemason, Kevin Stewart, Sunderland, England. The year 2015. I am an ex-Freemason who reached the penultimate degree of Freemasonry. Despite the material possessions I possessed, I could not get all the women I wanted. I wanted women from a wealthy family, but they did not care what I had. These women owned a lot of money. I did witchcraft rituals so they would like me. And all the women that I cast ritual spells on, they fell in love with me. Only one woman did not fall in love with me and she was Suzanne. My spells never hit her. The more I dabbled in love spells to cast on her, the more she was moving away from me. The Holy Spirit in her life repudiated the life I led. She is a fervent Christian and had immunity against my spells. She looked at my face and did not want to come near me, so deep in the darkness that I lived. She did not know about my life, nor know that I was a Freemason. But the light of her life did not match the darkness of my life. I only managed to conquer Suzanne when I became a man of God. She did not know of my conversion and saw the light of the Holy Spirit in me and approached me. I had already renounced everything and consecrated myself every day. I fasted in the morning preparing for ministry. Suzanne saw the light of God in my life and today we are married and we are happy growing together in grace. I will report my walk until I reach Jesus. I lived in England, I participated in Scottish Freemasonry. I met important people like politicians, judges, doctors, lawyers, and businessmen. I was a mason who performed satanic rituals. I even made a meeting inside the Masonic shop. I invoked Satan to pass information. An evil spirit possessed the person's body inside the Masonic lodge and passed on a message from hell. Several rival party politicians were together in the same store. And that spirit told them not to quarrel because anyone who wins will be in the services of darkness. That demon promised to give power and fortune to all politicians who work for Satan. The first message from that demon who possessed the member was to indoctrinate the students of the universities and colleges. The demon told them to build a group of rebels to be used for evil purposes within schools and colleges. Today there are many colleges of parapsychology, biogeny, and others that contradict the Bible. The second message was to brainwash the minds of children and adolescents through school books, to lie about the creation of the world and the origin of man. If you notice the science books it annuls God as the servant of the universe and no history book speaks of Jesus. All kings, emperors, and governors are remembered, the name of Jesus is not mentioned. School is Satan's strategy to indoctrinate your child. The Bible does not emphasize that our children have to be educated by strangers. The education of the children belongs to the parents. From the time of Moses, children were taught the laws by their parents. When Samuel was born he was taken to be educated in the temple. And Satan changed this by taking the power of education from the hands of parents and temples and transferred to the schools. You teach your child about God and the school teaches that the world did not have a creator. You teach that your child came from the seed of Adam and the school teaches that it came from the offspring of the monkey. And your son is still influenced by the son of the ungodly who studies with him, teaching sinful ways and attitudes. In Latin American countries schools have education programs for all, where children of witches, murderers, thieves, drunks are required to study together. All these classes of people have children who study in the same school as the children of Christians. I am not including these teenagers, but I speak of the danger that a Christian child passes through liberal schools that give up all places. I have witnessed children of Christians being corrupted by the children of the wicked. Parents teach their children in the way of Jesus and when they put them in school, their children forget the teachings of their parents and turn themselves into other people. This is Satan's strategy, to mix Christian children with the wicked to corrupt them. And also some school material corrupts the mind and new atheists have emerged from among the children. Those who have financial conditions will never place their child in government schools that accept all kinds of children. There are schools in Latin America that integrate children who have been arrested for committing crimes. God gave me the conditions to enroll my son in an evangelical school. 
and if that school does not fulfill the obligation to indoctrinate my child in the word, I'll take my child off and pay a teacher to teach him at home. This is called family protection. If you cannot, pray to God, accompany your son in his studies and watch over him, because the school is part of Satan's educational system. Those who have financial conditions will never place their child in government schools that accept all kinds of children. There are schools in Latin America that integrate children who have been arrested for committing crimes. I was in the Masonic Lodge and a demon possessed a person. There were owners of newspapers in the store. The devil spoke in the mouth of that person saying, manipulate the news of the newspapers, leave the people uninformed about the reality of the world. Fool these people, tell lies, and form people's opinions. Convince them to believe the papers. Put crime reporting newspapers that speak of cruelty, deaths, and robberies. Children and teenagers will grow up reading these newspapers and will want to practice the crimes later. Even the adults who read these newspapers will have various problems in their lives. They are already very displeased with their situations. When they read crime on newspapers they are inspired to do the same things. They think they have nothing to lose and think of practicing the same crimes as reported in the newspapers. It is us who throw thoughts into their minds. We induce them to do this when they watch our newspapers. Crimes in the world have increased because of the newspapers. We have given you several ideas on how to kill a person. We have taught to quarter, stab, shoot, hide dead bodies and bury to hide the crime. All this our newspapers teach and have multiplied in the world. We have taught suicide and murder, we have taught the husband to kill his wife, mother to kill the son, brother to kill brother, children to kill the parents through the newspapers. All of this is our newspaper that teachers and sick minds practice because we take the mental control of their heads. The newspaper is the school of crime, as are films, drawings, and serials. Each of these teaches different types of sins such as witchcraft, theft, sex, addictions, depravity, and death. Every Christian who watches a newspaper has no strength against us and his soul belongs to us. The devil spoke to the owners of famous magazines selling on newsstands. He said, talk about the fashions of clothes for people to buy talk about our inventions. Talk about encouraging sex to depravity. Pay the models and actresses to pose naked. They will be on magazine covers and sex symbols that will encourage men to buy. Those who are in the Masonic shop are the owners of food factory companies. And the devil said, make food contaminated with toxic products to destroy vital organs. Make carcinogenic foods with satanic markings and symbols. I have increased your wealth. Television station owners were at that meeting. The devil asked to multiply the films, novels, serials, drawings, and programs with sex, betrayal, death, violence, drug addictions, homosexuality, and witchcraft. In return, the devil promised to increase the audience of these channels. Satan's plan is to destroy all mankind and the church through television. Pastors who make television shows are Freemasons. They were at that Masonic meeting. The devil asked these pastors to invent new supernatural movements, new theological teachings, and new seminars. Pastors received millions of pounds sterling from the fellowship to fund satanic projects in churches. I was a friend of these pastors before my conversion. These pastors visited small churches and offered promises to make those local pastors famous and known. They promised to make their small churches into mega churches. Those pastors of the meeting accepted the alliance. They signed a compromise agreement and received millions of pounds to build mega churches. When their churches were ready and full of people, they had to raise millions of pounds to pay the Masonic shepherds. In fact, the money was borrowed from the shepherds. They would have to work with prosperity theology to raise, without this teaching, could never raise millions of pounds to pay their debts. This group of Masons is the backers of small churches. They offer evangelical books and magazines with their teachings for pastors to teach the people. I mean the pastors of small churches, do not accept funding from Freemasonry since the light does not match with the darkness. If you make an alliance with these men, 
their part will be in the lake of fiery fire along with them. When I was a Freemason I could not reveal our plans. I, as a former Freemason, say to all of us that we do not reveal what we are. We always say that we are Christians and we go into the churches by showing that we are going to help. Obtaining titles of bishops, apostles, reverend, and shepherds is not a problem for Freemasons. They have theology schools and job title courses. When I was in Freemasonry our goal was to buy the pastors and put them to do radio programming. I helped many small churches, in return, they had to teach our theology. Our teachings do not speak against sin, nor does it encourage them to repent to renew the covenant with their God. We fund large buildings for these small church pastors as long as they follow our guidelines. They could not pray such that their God did not reveal our strategies. I had a publisher and I published many evangelical books which were filled with heresies and theologies of prosperity. I paid the authors to sell their knowledge. Satan gave me all the necessary information, in return he enriched me. It may sound crazy, but Satan proposed me a fortune in a covenant at the graveyard. He appeared to me like a cowboy and talked to me. I do not know what his true identity as if he was Satan or another demon. He introduced himself as Lucifer. We made a pact right there and he shook my hand, it was not a spirit. He said that a suitcase full of money was in my house. I ran home and saw a suitcase on top of my bed. I do not know how anyone got into my house and put that suitcase full of money. And so I got rich that night. I opened a theology seminary to train false pastors and false Christians teaching unprincipled doctrines. I knew the true gospel of the apostles, but I preferred to manipulate the word. I did theology and master's degree in Christian philosophy, but I did not believe in God and considered the Bible as a mythological book. I would only believe in the Bible if I could see God but because I did not see him I did not know him. Already in the powers of darkness, I believed in seeing the devil. In a sacrificial ritual, a black cloaked being appeared to everyone in the Masonic Lodge, his face was covered with a black handkerchief. He approached them all, then walked some distance and disappeared. The security guards who stood at the door of the Masonic Lodge said they did not let any strangers enter our meeting. The security of our store is impenetrable, all the doors were closed. And that being got inside like something invisible. All the information that the demons passed on to us, everything was fulfilled. A demon who never revealed his name to anyone but only to me said, Your name is Seven Full Moon. He owns seven authorities and gave me all them to me. I spent seven years making an effort to get the seven authorities. Every year of sacrifice I got one of these authorities. The first year one got the first authority was in the year 1990. I got the gift of prosperity. All the people who came to me, I collected the value of the consultation and put my hands on it. People were able to get into big companies. Others have become entrepreneurs. There have been people who have moved up from their positions in their companies. A Christian with his almost bankrupt clothing shop consulted me. In a few months, his store started selling and his profit increased by opening more stores. He does not believe in the God who could help him and went to look for mine. What he did not know is that his name was written in my master's book. All the souls that needed my services belong to the devil seven full moons. I wrote down their names and entered the woods at midnight to deliver the list of names. He would appear to me with a large black cloak and never showed his face. Everyone who had their names written on the list is everyone who came to me. If a Christian came to me and needed my help, he no longer belonged to his God, but to my master. I had the gift of prosperity in my hands and gave it to those who paid me well. Only with this gift did I become rich. The gift of prosperity arose within Freemasonry. There is no such doctrine in the Bible because this teaching arose in the Masonic Lodge. And some Masonic strategists passed themselves off as Christians and took these teachings to the churches. This theology came from hell to Freemasonry and the store was distributed to all churches. What makes me sad is the multiplication of this teaching in several churches, how these heresies have gained strength in Christian courses colleges, and books. In 1991, 
I received the gift of magic from my master demon. He appeared to me and taught his magic. I made objects fly, people levitate. I bent aluminum, spoons, and nails by the power of the mind. I made a lot of money doing these things and attracted large audiences. I could be a great magician, but a Freemason is not allowed to reveal himself. So I limit myself to performing only on particular occasions. In 1992, I received the gift of healing. The demon appeared to me and threw an oil of herbs over my head and all over my body. I was anointed by him and lifted up as the warrior of darkness. As God anoints his own, the devil also anoints his. I received the gift of healing and performed great miracles. I made a lot of money. I have healed people of cancer, AIDS and incurable diseases. I did more things that the city church does not do. The people would come sick from the church and seek me. I would heal them from all evil. I charged money to restore their health. Churches that do the miracle and charge for healing do the same thing I did in the past. These churches that charge high offerings because of the healings are not from God. When God heals he does it freely. Jesus healed many sick people in the land of grace. Jesus multiplied the bread and gave it to the poor. In 1993, I received the gift of blessing. I could prophesy luck in marriage, dating, engagement, finances and other things. But it was not just me uttering those words. The demon instructed me that this gift would only work if the person carried a symbolic object. The objects were pink soap, water, salt, artifices that I consecrated could sell. The person bought the objects of mine, I would utter words of sorts and they would get everything. And they came to me to testify to the effects they had on their lives. What saddens me is to see that there are churches that work with sacred objects, just as I did before. These objects I worked on were the cause of evil in clients' lives too. Every person who took one of my objects took with him a legion of demons. They even had fortunes in life, but everything is for the destruction of their lives. In 1994, I received the gift of the curse. And everyone who challenged me, I cursed. There were people who lost everything. Others were dismissed from their companies. Even Christians who have no seal of the Holy Spirit were struck with my curse. Today there are shepherds who curse their sheep. In 1995, I received the gift of divination. The demon appeared to me and touched my forehead and the head began to ache. The demon said that the third eye was opening on my forehead. With that eye in mind, I would read the future. After this gift, I knew everything that happened in each life. I had the gift of clairvoyance and saw visions of destruction that the devil himself did to deceive me. I guessed even a person's government ID number because an evil spirit was speaking in my ear. I made a lot of money with this gift of clairvoyance. There are pastors who have the gift of divination and speech that is a revelation. He has the gift of clairvoyance and speech that is the vision of God. The gift of clairvoyance you only see what the devil wants. He made optical illusions by producing false images. I prophesied and the devil had to fulfill the prophecy. If he did not fulfill my prophecy people would not believe me anymore. And that would not be good for the devil's plans. I was the one who made people believe the evil one. I could not lose the people's trust so I had to continue driving them into darkness. In 1996, I received the gift of killing. The devil appeared to me and shook my hand. The skin on my hand went black. And from that day on, if a person challenged me, I would cast a curse of death and it would happen. I cursed a businessman with cancer and months later he died. The demon stayed in his navel and developed bladder cancer. This cancer grew and killed him. One boy said that he did not believe in my powers. He was an atheist. I cursed him to die in a car accident. He was walking on the street and suddenly he threw himself in front of a car and died. The demon pushed him into the car. And so in seven years, I received the seven gifts of the devil. I and the Masons founded some unknown sects that used the name of Jesus to confuse the people. No one from that sect served Jesus, the sect leader exists to deceive the people. All this was the order of demons. 
until one day God grew weary of my iniquities and used a servant of God to speak with me. He said, Man if you do not repent of all your evil deeds, something terrible will happen. I did not believe it, I mocked that humble man. Three days later I felt severe heart pain, I went to the cardiologist and was told that I had pericarditis. My health was always great, but now I had heart inflammation. On a Friday night I was lying down and I felt strong chest pains. I remembered the words of that Christian, I began to remember God and asked him not to let me die. I was afraid to leave my wealth, I was married and had no children. I never believed in God and at that moment I had faith, I asked for mercy from him and I was willing to drop the occult. That chest pain intensified making me have a blackout. Everything was paralyzed until the vital organs did not work. I had no sign of life and my spirit was close to leaving the body. He who gave life to my body took it from me and my body fell over. A light descended from the sky like a great star and stopped near me. He was the angel of God and he shone brightly. From this, you can imagine the glory of Jesus. The angel said, God heard your request for mercy and your promise to drop the occult. That was in the year 2015 that I had this rapture. The angel said, come with me, and he led me on a long road. This road had many dead snakes, spiders, and bugs. We came to a black gate and a phrase is written, welcome to hell. I shivered because I did not know this place existed. I thought it only exists in Greek and Hebrew mythology. Up to heaven, I thought it was Greek folklore, the Elysee. My fear of dying was to cease to exist and never to live again. I never imagined that there is an eternal place. That gate opened and a steam came in my direction. The unbearable heat almost melted me. I believe the angel did not allow any harm to happen to me. His presence prevented the effects of the heat from afflicting me. Albert Pike in hell The first person I saw in hell was Albert Pike one of the famous Satanists who also went from Freemasonry. Celebrities in hell I saw Noriuki Patmarita being plagued by demons and also the actor James Avery who suffered in torment. The demons crushed them, plucked their skins. I saw actor Patrick Swayze also in great torment. The fire consumed him and the demons tortured him. I also saw rock singers. Bassist Paul Gray played and his fingers popped. The flesh of his body fell as he played continuously. The same thing happened with guitarist Gary Moore who goes through the same sufferings. What a terrible situation these singers and players are. I saw the singer Joey Ramone singing until his vocal cords burst. He no longer had a voice just a whistle coming out of his mouth. This process will be so forever. Politicians I went to another section and saw the demons holding meetings about politics. They wanted to put in power to govern the politician who made a pact with them. The demons use rich and powerful men of the world to control all their plans. These men of great political influence obey the orders of these demons. You who are Christians and wish to enter politics, do not do this, the demons are in power. Demons have used politicians to legalize abortion, gay marriage, drug release, and other aberrations. Everything in hell is planned in meetings to destroy mankind. Although the Bible says that God instituted governmental authorities and that the powers of these rulers were given by God to govern the people, many have used their God-given powers and influences to work for darkness and oppress the people. God has given authority to politicians, but they are the ones who choose whether to use for good or for evil. Many sell themselves to the devil through governance. Satan is the prince of this world and gives his kingdom to whomever he wills for the world lies by the evil one. Demonic foods from hell food that leaves the man and woman sterile. I saw chemicals being injected into the food that affects the hormones leaving the reproductive organs sterile. Christians in hell in hell I watched crowds of evangelicals, I've never seen so many Christians. The first class of evangelicals the angel showed me is of Christians who did not have self-control. They had no rules of life and seduced married women. These Christians were malicious and seduced the women of the church. This is the first class. They were debauched, immoral, scatters their own reputation and were stumbling blocks to the faith of genuine Christians. 
we went to the second class of Christians. These were aggressive, they did not accept correction for their mistakes, they treated their shepherds badly and they became enemies of those who did not agree with their ways of life. The angel took me to the third class of Christians. They were impure, had malicious thoughts and their hearts were filled with sensuality. The fourth class, where the angel took me were filled with the defilers who have corrupted what is sacred. They blended what is holy with the profanations of the world. They stained the purity of the cults with heresies and placed abominations within the house of God, desecrated the altar, defiled the sanctity of the liturgy. I was taken to the fifth class of Christians. These were ambitious with material goods to satisfy their desires. They were capable of anything to achieve everything they wanted even to the extent of hurting the others to stay in their place. They made up lies to steal jobs. They said slander to be benefited or promoted. These were selfish who have an excessive love for themselves. They did not care about anyone, they just thought of themselves. We went to the sixth class, where are the Christians who made their churches a war zone, caused dissension, did not agree with the teaching of the shepherd's holiness. These created factions to attack the church and they enjoyed the ensuing conflicts. They lived apart from the holy brothers who obey the word of God. We went to the seventh class, where the Christians were competing for church positions, even wanting to harm the other. Some of them are envious of the pastor and wanted to take his place. Others hoped for some to leave the church to take up their duties. We went to the eighth class, where the cheating Christians are. They cheated on documents, misled people in business, and took advantage. They sold fragile goods to deceive. They were greedy with their headquarters to have everything, even if they did not need the money they wanted to accumulate. We went to the ninth class, where the church leaders are thieves. They stole hidden money and diverted large amounts of money into their accounts. The founding pastor entrusted the position to his pastor friend. He stole money from the church and his pastor did not know. When he died he was honored as a celebrity by the pastor who trusted him and never knew of the misappropriation of his friend's money from the church. People of God, do not be part of one of these groups. Do not go to one of these valleys by repenting of your sins. Do not go to hell. Do everything you can to avoid falling into this dark place and stay there forever. Walk the way of Jesus. Do not play as a Christian, nor fall into the wrong way of serving God. I saw many Christians in hell who have followed the worldly gospel of prosperity of being a Christian who is in church with hands clinging to the world, serving two masters at the same time. For the gospel of prosperity, there is no separation from the world, their kingdom is to have money. This is the heavenly paradise that the prosperity gospel adherents believe that the Bible speaks to them. In the prosperity gospel the person only wins if he gets a lot of money and fame, without it, he is a loser. This prosperity gospel was produced from Freemasonry and have done much damage to the church and led many Christians to hell. I know this because I was a Freemason and we created this gospel on earth. We inverted everything. The Bible says who perseveres to the end will be saved and will pass to eternity and get their reward. But the Freemasonry that controls the gospel world made the doctrine that we do not have to worry about eternity and that we have to worry about the material things on earth, because our reward and our heaven is here on earth. Any church that invites the gospel singers or gospel prosperity preachers is in alliance with the darkness. Do not invite them to your churches as they are curses created by Freemasonry to corrupt the gospel and make the merchandise with the word of God. How many pastors invite these singers and star preachers to fill their churches, this is a great trap created by Freemasonry. Do not give the members hard-earned money to these gospel singers and preachers, to help those in need. The doctors tried to revive me until they succeeded. It was only possible because my spirit of life returned to the body. I mean to the church the death of the Christian is not the biggest loss. The greatest loss is not having God in our lives while we are alive. I married Suzanne and opened a church to evangelize souls, I did not congregate in the churches near my house because they were all involved with Freemasonry. 
I did not want to go into the convention of ministries because I did not want my church to be influenced by Freemasonry. When Freemasonry discovered that I had left the lodge, they wanted to kill me like a traitor. But I already knew that and had already moved to Denmark. All that the devil gave me like money and status. He took everything from me because I broke the alliance of darkness. Freemasonry confiscated my goods and in my escape to Denmark, I could not take anything. Jesus gave me everything I needed. The price was a prayer life. There are three kinds of blessings, the one God gives, the one you conquer by your effort and the one the devil gives you. Satan tried to hinder me with his obstacles, but I got almost everything I lost. I was not richer, but I was not poor either and I'm happy. I and my wife play it safe. She is my helpmate and has helped me to the growth of the work. Today we live in Reykjavik, Iceland. A different country where nobody knows me. My ministry is small, I do not want it to be a known church where it will make me famous. I am shepherding the blood redeemed church and runs an apologetic ministry. We combat the monetary theology of printed paper. The prosperity gospel is evil teaching that has been growing in the world. It is a teaching that strengthens the love of mammon and exalts and nourishes the self-centered ambition of the soul. I am sharing only a third of my testimony, I will not extend much to not stay all day talking about the great wonders that I have been provided from God. May the holy peace and grace of our God be with the hearers Amen.